track of what how do you remember a person of what they are like or something I think you have mentioned a couple of days before that mm -hmm. you, you have like a place where you write notes of that person mm -hmm. to remind yourself of who this person is and I I thought that was so, such a beautiful like um, mm -hmm. I guess detail mm -hmm. you know that I feel like sometimes when we make connections with people we forget that we are humans mm -hmm. and that we all like to be remembered of the things we like right right so could you like say sure. I, I would love for you to share that as well so so, so I think that again um, I love the I, I love the, um, the Stephen King story you know Stephen King mm -hmm. he actually you know he's a uh, horror story writer yes, right? and really super successful horror story writer and he has this thing that every time he goes to a conference for writers people ask him so Mr. King what kind of pen do you use to write your stories uh -huh. and he always laughs because he says that it's not the pen it's what I write yes so yeah. I don't want to get too hung up on tools because I think tools are important, tools are useful, but in the end you have to build a system that works for you. Right. Okay. So I've seen students build something like this using Google Sheets. Mm -hmm. Just yeah. like anybody has access to it, and what you do is that you make columns and you make like the name of the person, where they were, how I met them, and there's the most particular column, how I add value to this person. Mm -hmm. Knowledge, access, attention. And again, knowledge can be many ways because guess what if you want to connect with somebody a friend and they don't know javascript oh i know javascript i can help them out with their homework mm -hmm. so that's the right. value i can bring to them mm -hmm. sometimes the value you bring to somebody is just being a friend listening yeah. to them so being clear in those things but in the concept of being looking for an internship and finding your next opportunity you have to be mindful that maybe your talent, maybe the, the value you add to this person is that, hey, they're looking for marketing interns. Okay. I'm a marketing yeah. major. Mm -hmm. So their job is to recruit people like me. So right. I am valuable. To yeah. Them. Many people consider themselves introverts mm -hmm. and they are told to go out there and get internships and talk to a lot of people and get the, those interviews and do excellent in interviews. How do you do it as an introvert? What would be your advice for them? Of course, of course. So introverts are very, very tricky in the sense that traditional networking events for introverts are torture. Uh, so the idea of working a room and talking to 50 different people, that's uh, torture. Uh, <laughs> so don't do it. Don't do it. Uh, because uh, introverts, you have to be very strategic about how you spend your energy. Mm -hmm. Because when you show up to an event, so that we are at the Society Hispanic Professional Engineers Conference right now, and if you show up at nine in the morning and slice a little bit of energy and a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, and next thing you know, you're like, it's 2 p.m. and you're all drained out. And guess what? The career fair is at 3 p.m. So you have to be very strategic about how you spend uh, your social energy. Right. So I recommend a couple things. Okay. First of all, if you have anxiety about going to events, you need to expose yourself to that anxiety a little bit and set a goal. So a uh, goal for that would be, okay, I'm gonna go to this event and spend one hour at it. And then I'm gonna go home and play with my Switch or PlayStation or whatever. Yeah. But be one hour out there, a bit uncomfortable. Okay. Uh, so that'd be like the first goal. Getting out of your comfort zone. It's sad, yeah. it's sad. Like, okay. At least saying I'll be there for specific amount of time if, if after that time I, I feel that i want to stay cool yeah if not well i already made my goal mm -hmm. i can go home mm -hmm. and then yeah. and then bypassing people so instead of talking to 10 different people in the room you can actually go to the organizer or if it's a panel event for example a lot of people what they're gonna do is that once the panel is over they're gonna be walking over to the panelist and getting questions from them. But if you're an introvert, a suggestion I would say is go to the moderator of the panel because okay. nobody wants to talk with them. Because again, <laughs> this, I want to talk with the celebrity. I want to talk with the right. expert. Yes. Talk to the moderator or talk to one of the organizers of the event and mention, hey, I'm so-and-so. 
I do X and I'm interested in meeting people that do X as well. Mm. Is there anybody here that you think I should connect with? Oh, that's, that's a great tip. Nice, that's, a, yeah. yes, that's a great advice. So it's an accelerator. So instead of talking to 100 people, now, oh, you should talk to A and B. And that's it. And you talk to those two people, and then go home. And play with your <laughs> Nintendo Switch. <laughs> or whatever you yeah. want to do after the event. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, so, yeah, so you can accelerate the way you do it. Because traditional networking events, are they don't work for introverts. And again, you should embrace that. You shouldn't change who you are. Yeah. What happens is that the idea of these events is to do the first touch. So the second touch, because you want to build a relationship with this person, a professional relationship, would be, hey, can we have coffee over Skype? Mm. Or can we, can, be, because what happens is that introverts, usually what happens is that they get anxiety when they're with these events with a bunch of people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But what I find out is that introverts are great listeners. And when it comes to one-on-one -on -one conversations with people you already know, they can be some of the more attentive and kind people to connect with oh, so yeah. after you after you've exchanged a couple emails couple of conversations over email with this person and if you find you have something in common i would say hey can we have a coffee just the two of us or make it a lunch or whatever you feel comfortable with but the idea is that you are furthering that relationship mm -hmm. and you're exchanging value that. you're exchanging your attention your social energy with the person while furthering the relationship. Yes. Yeah, and now, now thinking of any career affairs, mm -hmm. and there's an introvert, and uh, would you recommend to like do the same thing, like getting goals and saying, like maybe saying, instead of talking to I don't know, like ten companies today, uh, I'll focus on my my top three or my top five, or would you recommend uh, maybe like trying with many so that when you get to those top top ones uh, you will be more comfortable or like what would you recommend for introverts and maybe also for other like extroverts as well so so the career fair it's a it's a step it's a step of it because because i think that all the actual landing the job so finding the actual opportunity is going to happen outside the career fair the career fair is great if you have questions about a company or if you want to meet in person somebody that works at that company it's great for that. But what happens is that as an introvert, if you go to an event, you want to make your list of your top five companies. And usually from the one that I'm most interested in to the one I'm least interested in, and you start with that one. Because you want to warm up. You want to warm up your pitch. You want to warm up the way that you approach people. You want to warm yourself up for the, for the occasion. Right. Uh, and then what happens is that by the time you make it to the one you're the most interested in, you're perfect, you're good to go. Nice. Yeah, but then if you're an introvert, this preparation is even more crucial because every time you're out there, you are, again, you're becoming drained. Yeah. You're becoming drained. And, and just like something very tactic that, that, that helps me, and uh, I've seen that helps other introverts that are out there, is the fact of you know having a meditation app on your phone. And taking 10 minutes out of the conference. So the career fair right now, I think it's a, a full eight hours, I think. So from 8 a.m. to like so 4 p.m. So again, you made the trip out here. So step out for 15 minutes and sit down in a chair and, and do your 10 minute meditation or something like yes, that. Sure. And, and again, like, uh, and just know yourself. Be mindful of what works for you, what doesn't work for you. Definitely. I think. One last question that we would have for you, mm -hmm. Hugo, is what does good versus bad networking look like? Oh, I love that question. I love that question. <laughs> yeah, so, so bad networking, uh, you touched on that a little bit. It's sending out LinkedIn messages, a copy paste, just like without saying hi, without those things, asking for people for referral too quick without uh, building the relationship first. That's really bad networking. Also, the fact of saying things like, oh, we should catch up sometime. No, you should say, hey, I'm open Friday, 12 oh. onwards, and I'm open the Friday after next all day. What works for you? There's this saying that says that when you don't give like a time okay. and place, yeah. most likely it will never happen. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 maybe, and maybe some, some and sometimes that's, uh, that's not doable at the moment, but at least like, hey, what's the best way of getting in touch with you? And then you choose. Yeah. You choose if you give me your email 
or your Instagram profile, or your, or your phone, or, yeah. or whatever works for you. Mm -hmm. And I like to like, give people the power of choice. So if I ask you what works for you, it's just because I genuinely want to connect. Some people suck at answering back your emails. So they prefer a phone, so just text them. Mm -hmm. And again, like we all have uh, these uh, phones in our pockets, right? So we all have these tools. So it's not about finding the, the right tool, the right pen to write that story with. It's about what do you actually write? Exactly. That's true. All right. so, so that's bad networking. But good networking is asking people at the career fair, what is your biggest challenge? And then three <laughs> weeks later, <laughs> you send them something of value to them. And just remember, no need to reply. Uh, it's gonna take a lot of stress, a lot of stress uh, out of everybody involved. So uh, that'd be my parting advice for all of you folks. And awesome. Do you have any? Oh, any last minute? Yeah, um, last tips or last last tips you'd like to mention? Does it have to be about networking? Sure. It can be just all of these students probably are looking for internships. Mm -hmm. A lot of them might be also F one students. I know you were an F one mm, student yeah. once. Yeah, yeah. Um, what could you leave the audience with today? You have your own journey. Aww. You have your own journey. So if you're an F1 student and you're getting rejected by all these companies that don't sponsor, don't let it drag you down. Focus on the companies that you do match with. Uh, and don't compare yourself to others too much. Because what happens is that, guess what? Those students with 4.0 GPAs that are really good at studying and doing their homework and doing all those things, they have their own journey too. So I, I, want, I want everybody to compare themselves to themselves a week ago or a month ago. Oh. Uh, so that's why setting goals that are measurable, things like, oh, I'm gonna talk to three recruiters at the career fair. I'm gonna be out there for an hour. I'm gonna send five follow-up emails every Friday for the rest of my life. Wow. Those things are valuable. Because in the end, like, you can be super motivated and it's almost like uh, what's more powerful, like somebody that goes to the gym for an hour, for a week, and then quits, or somebody that takes a 20 minute run every morning for the rest of their life. Yeah. So in the end, these are habits that you need to build. So and be then, mindful of the good habits that you need to build, be aware, be cognizant of them, and do them, build them up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. everyone has their own path. Mm -hmm. So yeah, stop, stop comparing yourself to others. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have your own time for sure. Mm -hmm. um, well, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, yes, yes. Don't don't forget to go and listen to Latinos with Tech and Conexiones, and also don't forget to subscribe to Intermakers. We mm -hmm. have um, you can follow us anywhere on LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook. Facebook. LinkedIn, oh, yeah. Do you have any places LinkedIn. where they can follow you as well? Yeah. So the latinoswhotech.com. I have my blog. Okay. And they can also add me on LinkedIn if they want to reach out or have questions about networking or just life in general. Google we'll Castellanos yeah. on LinkedIn. Remember, he's an expert. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, everyone. Have a great day. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye.